first of all, I thank the organizers, especially Herman, uh, for inviting me to this. Uh, I mean, Spain is, uh, in, my, in my memory, is a beautiful country because when I was young, uh, we watched a movie uh, from Spain and uh, 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 romantic, the people feeling romantic, and, uh, and the country is beautiful. So <laughs> that's my feeling. Uh, so, uh, 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 <laughs> Okay, so uh, today uh, my uh, lecture time, uh, the title of my lecture will be more than in conventional and topological superconductors. Uh, because the definition of topological superconductors is not yet that clear, I would like to listen to you uh, to, to tomorrow uh, for, for the clear uh, definition. So uh, I will tell you uh, what kind of uh, uh, um, evidence has been shown from this uh, so-called topological superconductor. My name is Hai Buen from any University. Okay, so the outline of the lecture will be, I will give the introduction, majorly for the student here, uh, because it's, uh, it's uh, very fundamental. Uh, and then I come to the Kauri Keshans Magican state, which is a major uh, part of the bond state uh, in the vortex core. Uh, 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 and also possible Magyarana mode in the vortex course. Uh, I call it possible because it's still not uh, not uh, definitely uh, be sure that it is Magyarana. So it can be some kind of zero bias connected speed uh, in this higher tolerance limit. Then I'll come to uh, the so called um, uh, topological superconducting side. Uh, I majorly focus on the uh, pneumatic superconductivity, different labor bodies, making many experiments uh, in this uh, business two to cylinder three or business two to cylinder three uh, dope example. And also, uh, in our group, we deposit the business to the industry to fill on the iron based conductors. We use something that looks like a conductivity. conductivity. Okay, so then I come to the conclusion part. Uh, concerning vortex, let me start uh, from the Dino Galandao theory, uh, uh, just, just for the student. <laughs> so, uh, yesterday, Andrew Chukov has uh, mentioned that uh, once we have so, superconducting state is actually a macroscopic phase, phase coherent state of the charge carrier. The charge carrier is supposed to uh, now prove to be coherent. <coughs> so, uh, if the phase, ma macroscopic phase coherence, which means that the, the, the whole phase can be described by an uh, order parameter. Yeah? So, uh, based on the, uh, the, the, the Landau secondary uh, phase transition uh, scenario, it says that for any kind of uh, second order transition, uh, we can divide a uh, uh, so, so an order parameter. So in that case, superconducting state can be defined with this so called order parameter. So in that case, the Gibbs free energy of the superconducting state with uh, at finite temperature and with magnetic field can be written down in this way. And this is the Humboldt free energy of the normal state. So it's a normal state without field. And this, this part is the condensation energy, which is, should be negative uh, compared to this order parameter here. Okay? So then we come, uh, have this so-called kinetic energy, which is, uh, which is coming from the, from the current uh, in the superconductor state if we have a magnetic field. Yeah? So then uh, uh, this term is magnetic, uh, magnetic energy in the space. So that's the, I mean, the, how clever it is the Soviet Union scientists, the mathematics should the physics is very strong, and then, so they write down all this clear part of this uh, uh, in the ground of Gibbs free energy. Uh, by taking the derivative of this uh, Gibbs free energy either to psi or to A, you can get a two in the ground of uh, equation. One is in the ground of one, and the second is in the ground of two. So the first equation, you cannot see too much uh, message from the equation, just uh, you can survey it and then you can get the spatial, uh, spatial uh, change of the order parameter. That's important. This question can provide you a way to get a spatial change of this order parameter. The second equation is actually a uh, current uh, 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 flow, uh, a flowing current equation yeah, with the order parameter here. If you put all this, uh, this definition to here, then you, you can immediately get this kind of so-called extended lambda, uh, London, uh, London phase equation. Yeah? If you don't have a phase change in the space, uh, like in the Meissner state, then you can you, 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 you just have J proportional to A. That's the London phase equation, so very simple. 
This question, uh, this theory is beautiful, and so uh, it, it, it gets the uh, Nobel Prize in 2003. Also, it's very late. Huh? That's that's quite late because the theory was established in, by the end of 50s, as I remember. So uh, I said no. Uh, uh, <laughs> so uh, for the uh, for the uh, for the. For the super connecting system, uh, uh, based on this theory, one can derive two uh, length scales. One is the psi, which is the covariance length, which measures the spatial uh, scale of the uh, order parameter. And the second uh, length scale is the penetrating depth, which measures the, either the current or the magnetic field. How, does this, uh, how do these two parameters change spatially? So th this one uh, inversely proportional to the density state, uh, the superfluid density here. Okay, that's the basic message. And uh, if we, in a supernatural state, if we apply magnetic field, we know that the current on the edge will accumulate gradually with the field. Okay, to a certain value, then the then the pressure is too much, too 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 large. So in that case, the mag the superconductor does not like that, and then allows the magnetic field to penetrate into the superconductor and to form some kind of a boundary. So. This side is superconducting, this side is uh, normal. But the normal is a magnetic field because it's under magnetic field. Okay? So, in that case, one can calculate using the uh, Gilbert Landau uh, equation, majorly the first equation. Uh, the, this uh, uh, Gilbert Landau first equation, they calculate the so called interface energy. So, suppose that we have a small psi and a large lambda. Okay? Let's have a look. So if, uh, this is the calculation after using the uh, landau second equation. So this, uh, the interface energy per area, this is the area of the, of the interface. Uh, so uh, you can integral from, uh, from, uh, from, the, uh, from the far two sides. And then uh, the equation is written down in this way. This term, you can see that if the cosine is very small, okay, which means that this order, per order parameter can be easily uh, established, so which means that you have a large volume for saving energy, okay, so for, because the condensation energy is negative. So that means that the interface energy would be smaller. And the same reason for this term, if the, uh, if the lambda is big, yeah, which means that we have, uh, 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 if the lambda is big, which means that this area uh, is small, uh, this value is small. For large for large lambda, so which means that the energy also small uh, lower, yeah, compared to a smaller lambda. Okay, so in that case, uh, you have if you have a small psi and a large lambda, that will mean that you have a negative uh, interface energy because the, the, it it is a very uh, it is a lower energy. However, uh, if you have a larger uh, let's say larger psi, a smaller lambda then you will have a positive interface energy, so that's opposite. Uh, for, the, for this type, uh, uh, the precise calculation tells that the kappa, uh, which is defined this way, when it's larger than the uh, half square root 2, the interface energy is negative. This one, uh, this type is defined as a second order or type 2 superconductor. So when the magnetic field penetrates into the superconductor, because the interface energy is negative, so in that case, the system would like to separate the magnetic flux into many, many small flux lines because that has many, many uh, large area of the interface. Okay, so that's the reason why we have this state. Uh, so called mag. Uh? Sometimes it's kind of. Problem. Okay, so in that case. When the magnetic field goes into the type 2 superconductor, we have this kind of flux boundaries. Each one contains a flux quanta. That's, uh, that's the value. And uh, so the structure of this magnetic flux is that we have a normal core region. Normally, I mean, it is an imprecise language that this is a normal core region with the size of psi. 
uh, which is quite small. And then we have a magnetic field and a current, a, a current flowing surrounding the, this normal core in this area, which is lambda. Okay, so that's the basic structure of the vortex line. So this cartoon picture shows more clearly. So we have a normal core rating with a cosine and uh, the, the current or the magnetic field uh, spread, uh, uh, distribute in a large distance, which is lambda here. Okay, so that's the basic, uh, basic structure. However, missing this, uh, this uh, normal core, it is called normal core, but it's not uh, like the normal metal, uh, normal state, because it's a bubble of, for, first, it's a bubble of cosmic particles uh, uh, have been formed within the course. So the dispersion should follow the bubble of dispersion. And then uh, uh, also, uh, we should be possible to detect something, some kind of a confined dense state, that's the so-called bond state of the vortex. So for a more precise uh, uh, description, we need to serve the bubble of the uh, Jean's equation, okay? So the so-called PDD equation should be served. So then I come to the so-called the Jean's matrican, uh, 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 calorie the Jean's matrican state. Uh, this was first, uh, the pioneer work was first done in 1964, uh, by this, uh, by Caroli, Deschamps, Magican. They considered this equation and they did the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the detailed calculation by, uh, by serving this, this uh, BDG equation. Yeah? Uh, here, the added term is that the kinetic energy of the supercurrent. So here, uh, to, to the value of uh, energy, uh, this total energy. So that, that, that's uh, what, what they, they have done. And then the uh, the the the, the uh, based on this equation, the uh, some kind of a, a simple argument to say that the, when the gap is linearly increased in space, then they can have uh, uh, some conclusion to say that the bond state, the confined cosmological within the normal core, should have a bond state. The bond state energy is uh, proportional to the delta square over E F. Uh, because in the conventional superconductor, we know that the delta is much, much smaller than the EF. That's also the very foundation, uh, foundation of the BCS theory, we know that. Huh? So that's in the BCS picture. Uh, so we, we never mind how, how, uh, how, uh, how big the EF is, because the EF is uh, much, much larger than the, than the divide, term, uh, the, uh, divide energy or the, or the gap, okay? So in that case. Uh, but uh, that's the conclusion of this paper. However, experimentally, people don't find that. I mean, the first set of data was measured by STM uh, on this uh, niobium diselenite. So you can see that actually they don't see these discrete energy levels. I mean, the theoretically, it is predicted that we should see the discrete energy levels with the mu which changes, uh, 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 which is a uh, I mean, uh, it, uh, uh, this is a quantized state. However, the experiment does not show like that. What, what it turns out is that uh, at the center of the vortex, one sees this kind of giant peak, which is sitting at zero. Uh, and when you go away from the center, then this peak will split into two, quickly split into two, okay? So that's the, that's the uh, data shows. So what, what has happened? Uh, the reason is that, uh, actually, as I said, that uh, to observe this kind of quantized state, uh, because this is terribly small, yeah, because the delta is very small, for example, 1 milli EV, and the EF can be 1 EV. So in that case, this value is very small, this, I mean, the uh, spacing between the levels, okay? So that's why uh, 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 a lot of uh, uh, such state accumulate together, uh, and in the center you just send a peak, a giant peak. This collects a lot of uh, 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 energy state with uh, with the uh, different momentum, uh, the the mu value. Okay, so when we we'll go, uh, go go away from the center, the theoretical calculation done by these people shows that indeed you will collect more and more. Uh, levels with higher um, mu values. So this is a single peak split into two. Uh, so more, more clear calculation, I, I like this paper. Uh, that was done by uh, a Japanese group. Uh, uh, 
published in 1998, uh, uh, which treated data, uh, uh, treated physics in the so-called quantum limit state. Uh, this is also starting from this PDG equation, uh, in PDG equation, they surveyed and they considered this case in this quantum limit case. The, uh, the, the, their calculation shows something very interesting. So the, uh, they say that when the temperature lowers down, the real core size shrinks. That's something uh, at odd with uh, our understanding. Huh? Normally we think that uh, we, we think that the vortex core does not change with temperature, but the calculation shows that when the temperature is, uh, is low here, then you can see that actually the the order parameter ramps up quickly and then uh, shows some kind of Friedel oscillation. So that's at the low temperature. Uh, and when the temperature increases, then it continuously uh, goes up, being almost linear. So that's the calculation. And also, uh, they calculate the energy corresponding to different mu value here. Uh, you can see that uh, the, uh, this coordinate correspond to Kf times uh, psi zero, which is proportional to Ef over delta. So if the EF over delta uh, is a few hundred or thousand, like in the conventional superconductor, then all these levels will approach into there. So if you detecting temperature window is just a small like this one, then you are collecting a lot of density state. Uh, I mean, a lot of uh, the density, the, uh, the state of all these levels, okay? So it, that's why we see this so-called uh, central peak, yeah? So if this value uh, is not in the, in the uh, uh, th uh, this value is big. However, when, when this value is small, then with the same temperature window, energy window, you can see that these energy levels can be, can be reserved, just the several. So that's why uh, we need to measure such things in the quantum mm -hmm. limit. And for a system with the comparable uh, EF and the delta, so in that case, it, it could be possible to reserve such a state. Yeah. So this theoretical work also predict for such a case in the quantum limit. This is a this is density state after calculation. This is a, the distance from the center. You can see that from the center, the first level po positive mu value half is here. The second is here, and the third is here. So the so the energy does not change too much. Yeah. So it's just the mu half mu uh, half delta square over EF. And the, this is the second level, this is uh, three half. Uh, so that's the calculation. And, uh, and also it's uh, uh, this theory, uh, yeah, because it's in the quantum limit, even for the single band case, you have this so-called uh, particle hole asymmetry. So that's uh, the calculation. Uh, this is the first time, I mean, uh, from many uh, uh, papers, I found that this paper clearly shows this kind of half uh, half uh, values here, this half, uh, half, uh, two, uh, half uh, three half and five half. So that's the theoretical prediction, uh, which is consistent with the formula of the Karoli Deschamps Matrikan theory, and also gives these uh, half uh, values here. Uh, uh, the, uh, this is uh, just a cut uh, for, uh, uh, for the center and uh, uh, slightly away from the center. So you can see that the first peak should be very strong, the second peak, well, second peak. Um, this, is, this is the second peak. Yeah. Uh, yeah. R equals zero, I don't see second peak, <laughs> even for the theory. Uh, the, this is uh, the uh, first level, uh, uh, then at a distance of 0.2 psi, then you see the two, two levels. Yeah. Okay, so uh, th this is a theoretical prediction. Can we uh, find such things in the experiment? Uh, it seems not that easy, as I said, that we need to be in the quantum limit. Uh, actually, there are some pre pre uh, uh, previous data. Uh, so this set of data, uh, I think it's uh, 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 was in uh, Shim's group, I think I had published one set of data in this code 2212. Uh, within the vortex, we see this kind of uh, uh, tiny, uh, uh, tiny structure here. In the paper, in the last uh, paragraph, I found that they put all the possibilities here. One possibility is that it's a, it could be colored based on the matrix state. And it could be competing order. So that's a, that's a paper um, I mentioned that. Uh, but if it is a current state, uh, that's only the first level. Uh, yeah, it could be. Huh? 
Then uh, the Swiss group uh, uh, measured uh, the tunnel spectrum within the vortex core uh, in the YBCL. They also see such things, but they, uh, um, they uh, also are not so uh, sure that whether it is uh, the currently the Schatzmatrix state or competing water, because they only see uh, uh, one uh, level of the energy. And also, the, uh, in, even outside the vortex, sometimes they see that even outside the vortex, they also see such a computing order. So, uh, the, the, this energy level. So, that could be computing order or could be the uh, correlation of the magic state. Uh, okay, so uh, we use SPM at, uh, as uh, reviewed by Peter very nicely. So, uh, actually, SPM uh, uh, is just to measure the tunneling current based on, based on the quantum mechanics. Uh, actually, here uh, we are measuring. Uh, we use a tip. The mm, uh, the density state should be quite uniform uh, in the large uh, energy uh, value, and then we measuring actually this density state in the superconducting state. Yeah, uh, we have this uh, tunneling matrix element. Uh, the good thing is that the uh, the STM not only image, I mean, but uh, but also can measure this uh, DIDV, which is proportional to the uh, density state, quasi-bundle density state here, and even the second derivative, you can measure this interaction between electrons and the bosonic excitations, and the also very good thing is that the Fourier transform can uh, can uh, transfer the data, the real space measurement, to momentum space. That uh, Shims David uh, Shims has done a lot of beautiful work. Uh, by uh, by uh, uh, converting the real space data uh, measurement to the momentum space. So this is background. Let me introduce our data. Uh, so we uh, we measure this ion tellurium selenium. Uh, uh, as you heard, in ion based conductors, it could be that the Fermi energy is very uh, compar is comparable to the gap uh, as mentioned by UG. Uh, so uh, uh, in my group, we always do things like that. We always check with the squid, uh, uh, yeah, because uh, we have the uh, facility in the group. So before the STM measurement, we always check whether the quality of the sample is good. So then we measure. So the the transition looks quite good, and then we measure tunneling spectrum. This is spatial tunneling spectrum. Uh, in the ion based superconductors, I must say that this coherence peak region is not uniform. Uh, if you go spatially, this one is not uniform. You can, uh, yeah. Uh, but the bottom is, is quite uniform. So it's a four, falling gap. Yeah. Yeah. So at a, a field of five tesla at a temperature of zero point forty eight Kelvin, you can see this kind of dot, uh, which are the, the vortices. Yeah. Then we measure. We move up tip to measure vortices uh, to 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 measure the tunneling spectrum. So for example, we select. Uh, one vortices, this is the image of the vortices. We scan our tape to measure tunnel spectrum. Uh, in about 20 vortices, uh, for, for this set of measurement, we measure total, in total about 30 vortices. And uh, in about 20%, let's say six vortices, we see such a behavior. So in these vortices, you can see that actually in the center of the vortices, you can see that there is a giant pit. Uh, first, we, don't, uh, we see a splitting. Uh, structure here, yeah. This is a splitting structure, but on the positive side we see some kind of uh, uh, secondary and thirdary peaks. Okay, here is more clear. This is uh, the which is uh, I mean this is corresponding to these uh, three scanning lines. So you can see that this is more clear. So if we take this one out and the blow up, so that's the peak corresponding uh, to energy of 0.45 mV, 1.2 and 1.8. If we just calculate from the tip position, and then if we uh, calculate the ratio, it's one over two point seven over four point two. So th this one is indeed correspond uh, quite close to uh, the theoretical one for the Carrier Deschamps Magnitude State, which is uh, uh, one to three to five. Okay, this is one to uh, two point seven to four four point two. So in that case, we think that probably we have found the Carrier Deschamps Magnitude State, uh, uh, the discrete. This great current uh, edition uh, what you can say. Sorry? Uh, yes. The features that you observe uh, around the vortex, uh, yeah, outside, uh, the, yeah, the blue, the white things. Yes. In the, in the first one. Yes. 
uh, are related with the topography. I mean, the, the, the line, this one. This line? No, no. <laughs> oh, that's the image. I mean, that's the this is because the topography. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, uh, I mean the vortices. Yeah, the, this is a one vortices, of course. But uh, we we cannot guarantee it's uh, so ideally uh, uh, round. Okay, so can be. I mean, yeah. You mean this one? Yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 that's because that's they are symmetric. Yeah. This, this image. This image. So, well, <laughs> such a shape we we would regard to say that it is it is a, it is a symmetric. Yeah. Question, Sorry, but they are aligned with the atomic lattice. Ah. No, it uh, this is uh, the another cut. Yeah, yeah, but the cuts. Ah, you, you mean about the influence the from other vortices? Uh, other vortex, you mean? Uh, that's possible. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is a four Tesla data, so, so it is indeed a, a local one. So uh, we are not sure whether this little. Uh, sh uh, shade is coming from uh, the, sec the nearby bodies. Yeah. James, you have a question? What's the average gap value when the field is off? Uh, it is, uh, I think it is here. Uh, it's about uh, 2 milli. 2 milli, yes. So it's, uh, it's uh, within, within, the, within the. But the highest one seems to, close, to be close here. Yeah. Can you change the field direction? Yes. Would you then flip it? That, that's quite similar. Oh. That's quite similar. It looks the same? Yeah. But so it wouldn't flip. Flip what? I was just, I mean, I never. You mean this side to flip to Yeah, better. because the band structure doesn't flip. No. No, but the, uh, the, uh, the uh, vortex bound states uh, is symmetry. Um, I mean, why is it not particle hole symmetric? Mm -hmm. what, what, because the background band structure is not the But in, 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 in this initial calculation, there was no. The, if, if you do the real calculation, you capture the background. Yeah, yeah. The, the, okay. So, so the real calculation overrides that effect completely. Yes. yes. If, if, yeah. if this vortex has no uh, uh, has nothing to do topological, then it should be the same. Uh, oh. the if I were to have a perfectly particle hole symmetric band structure, and I would, and I see something particle hole asymmetric. My intuition tells me because my vortex, my magnetic field points in one direction, not in the other direction. Um, Why is there particle hole no, asymmetry? The spin, the spin up, spin down is degenerate. So in this case, if we don't yeah. have a topological, so in that case, always positive side is uh, uh, such thing shows. If the single band, huh? what's special about positive? It's in magnetic field direction. That's no, 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 it depends. I mean, the, for, the, for the case of a single band, yeah. if the fermionate is small, you always have this uh, particle, particle hole asymmetry. So, right. that, so if the if field the positive side, the, uh, the positive side for the field, uh, 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 for, uh, for this direction, if you change the direction, still, I mean, the, 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 the solution should be like that. Yeah, something I don't yeah, understand. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if 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 we don't have, the, if we have, if we have nothing with the topological here, then it should be like that. Would it? Yeah, it's the all particle hole asymmetric effects are delta or epsilon. So right. Suppose you have a quadratic band, then no, if delta is very tiny, you don't see it's just like a flat approximation. But delta becomes large, you begin to see the. Yeah. It's just yeah. Yeah. But, but I think you're. I mean, in the calculations of Machida. They, yeah. they show some particle hole asymmetry. And yeah, that's a, that's a particle hole symmetry, yes. And I guess these particle hole asymmetry. That does, does not depend, depend on, on the field direction. Yeah, does not depend on yeah. the field direction. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
spatially, this is the energy level uh, for the three uh, for these four max. Uh, okay. So we we also did uh, put all this data together for for the for the uh, for the first first uh, energy level, uh, uh, which is detected from all vortices. For some vortices, we see only one uh, peak. For example, this one only one peak. But for others, we have three peaks, then we take only the first order, then all the data are located here. So we take the average, we find the average value is about 0 0.45 mV, and we use this formula to calculate. Uh, if we take a gap, a value from 1.1 to 2.1, this region, then the uh, Fermi energy is corresponding to 1.3 to 4.9 mV. So that's a very small Fermi energy. And we also calculate, uh, uh, to compare to the theory. So the theoretical prediction for this uh, first level, uh, the spatially, the, the intensity changes a lot. This is the first one, this is the second, you can see the third. So our data shows something a little bit uh, like, <laughs> this is uh, for, the, for this little uh, hump here. So that's our data, this is statistically. This is for all the six scan uh, here, yeah. So we compare to the uh, RPES data. This is the RPES data uh, shows that for this whole band, uh, uh, it gives the Fermi energy of uh, 4 mEV, and for the electron band, it uh, gives the Fermi energy of 10 mEV. So we, we don't know which band it is corresponding to our case, because uh, from STM point of view, we don't know. And however, because our tunneling spectrum shows a coherence peak, uh, at the energy of about 2 mV. Let me come, come back here. Uh, so, so in that case, we think that could be some uh, one, one uh, dominant band. Is, uh, one band is uh, dominating the current spectrum here. But your gap map disorder is up to 100%. Gap map disorder? If you show us an image of the gap map, it will be highly disordered. Uh, that, yeah, yeah, that's true, 20% at least. Yeah, that's true, yes. So it is a uh, complex mixture of a different bands, but but if we have a peak like that, so maybe one dom one band dominate from time for the tunneling spectrum. So that's okay. Yes. Wouldn't the fact that you see these quantized states of positive energy tell you that it's an electron-like band which generates them? That's a good point. Yes. Yes, that's a good point. Yeah. Could be, yeah. That, mm, yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's, that's some new message we learned. Okay, good. So let me continue. And uh, uh, so actually our measurement indeed in the, in the quantum limit, uh, this is the estimation. So our temperature is 400 millikelvin, I say. Uh, TC is about uh, uh, 9 to 10 Kelvin, so which is corresponding to 0 0.03 value. And this value we calculate from the, uh, from the Fermi packet uh, 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 to take the Kf and the size 0. Uh, for the whole pocket here, I'm sorry, yeah. mm -hmm. here, here we take the whole pocket and there's a Ksi, then we get that it's a red, it ranges from 0.3 to 0.6, okay? So uh, this value is much, much a lot smaller than this one, it is in the quantum limit. As shown by uh, Yuji this morning, I think uh, 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 Hanabri's data in the ion selenium that could, could be also the uh, the, uh, curly, the discrete current efficient matrix state. But, but there are only one peak, huh? so that's uh, something a bit different. So you don't see the second order and the third order. But this is the same surface of the same crystal at the same doping at the same temperature. Uh, you mean? Uh, that's the Hanoverian No, his is ion selenium. His is ion selenium. Okay, however, I, uh, we, we must to say that actually we have 40% to 50% does not, what is it, does not show such behavior. Uh, quite often you see such behavior, so uh, this is what I call, you see a giant peak. Uh, this peak is not sitting at zero because after calibration we don't see any single vortex sitting, really sitting at zero. Uh, we always see such things. We, uh, that Shim has a paper, uh, Shim and his colleague have a paper, uh, also show such a behavior, looks quite similar like our spectrum. Uh, this one also not really sitting at a zero, so that's uh, uh, 
that's the data. Huh? So uh, I mean, all our 30 vortex have been calibrated in this way. So we, we should find well really zero is, and we find that none of that 30 uh, really sitting at a zero. So that's uh, my uh, my uh, our observation. Uh, however, uh, you have heard a lot about uh, 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 another uh, observation from another group by Hong Ling and his colleague. Uh, they found in uh, some vortices, this is a tunnel kind of spectrum. Uh, of course, in these vortices, you they, see, they, they have seen uh, one single peak. Uh, somehow, uh, uh, I mean, lowers down the intensity when go uh, when leaving the center. So this one, I must say that indeed it does not like uh, the Carolyn Deschamps metric in state. So I cannot uh, say that this uh, this is a Carolyn Deschamps metric in state. And recently, uh, in Don Lifeo's group, they even found in this material, uh, they observe a lot of peaks, but only uh, but but always there is one peak sitting at zero. So that's uh, you can see here there is a, a one peak sitting at zero. So. So, so they also want to say that even in this system, uh, they also uh, observe there's a zero uh, conductance peak, yeah, which might correspond to the uh, Majorana mode. Okay, uh, the physics actually started from theory. Uh, uh, in the iron tellurium selenium, uh, the theoretical, especially by Zhang Pinghu, uh, the group, uh, the uh, the claim that when the, uh, with the doping of tellurium, the PZ band will sink down, okay? So in that case, we're hybridized, uh, we're crossing this DXZ band, and then you will make a cross there. And, and, and uh, with the tellurium, uh, uh, more tellurium doping, this crossing uh, approaches to the Fermi energy. And due to the tellurium, because it's heavy, and the spin optic coupling is strong, so in that case, it will make this kind of topological feature. Uh, so, it, so in that case, they, they claim this kind of uh, topological feature, uh, surface state, and uh, later on, it seems supported by uh, some APES measurement. Uh, that this is a theoretical, ah, uh, this is a, wait a minute. Um, yeah, I mean, this is <laughs> the theoretical picture. And uh, uh, supported by uh, the data, uh, the laser, uh, no, it's uh, uh, spin polarized RPS data uh, in, in this paper. Uh, yeah. Good question. Uh, you showed the data for two materials. They both seem to show my animals. Yes. Is there any evidence from RPS and the other materials that PZ band really crosses this DXZ? Oh, the, this I, paper, this I paper does, uh, does want to say that. The, this is a science paper, the, which is a collaboration with the Hong Bing and the Xin for the iron tellurium selenium. Right, but what about other materials? And, uh, another material, uh, Dong Lai's, uh, I see uh, one set of data shows a set of behavior, just recently. Uh, but it, uh, uh, I question, uh, I ask the question to the student, the student said, because in the gamma point, normally we don't have the whole, uh, whole pocket. Yeah, but uh, for some reason, the find in some samples, she shows that they crossing. So that's the latest progress, as I know. Yeah, this this one occurs uh, near gamma, huh? so that's a theoretical. Right. So with the gamma. Because the other material, I guess, all knowledge was that there is nothing at gamma. That's true. That's true. I also have this, this concern. Yeah, this question. Yeah, but uh, but uh, we, we do see the, this 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 peak, and uh, some peaks really sitting at zero here. This little peak here. Yes, it's sitting at zero. So that's something other us. Uh, let me continue. So, so, so then uh, we, yeah, we, we were under pressure because uh, oh, Ding Hong Ding and uh, Dong Lai are my friend, and uh, and uh, what what has happened? So then we we try to measure more vortices. Uh, we we with new data. Huh? So this, uh, we change the magnetic field. For when the field is six tesla, it's about uh, uh, two hundred sixty vortices. So so we measure one by one. Uh, but in some cases, we do see such thing. Uh, you can see this kind of uh, spectrum. Uh, yeah, after calibration, uh, even after calibration, this is a, a roughly uh, a symmetric background with a zero peak here. Uh, this is vortices, and then if you have a close look at the vortices, so this, uh, which one's more clear? Uh, ah, this one more clear. You can see that actually the peak 
the, the intensity changes when you move away, but it does not speed. So that one indeed uh, does not look at, uh, uh, look like the calorie deficient much can stay. So uh, we cannot. Question. Uh, so what temperature is this at? Uh, what what is measurement at uh, zero four uh, point four Kelvin? Yeah. Okay. Question. Yes. What what's different between these two types of vortices? Those that are uh, showing what looks more like correlated mm -hmm. to geometric versus yeah. what seems to show here by what 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 changed? What changed? Yeah. That we don't know. <laughs> uh, we don't know. We we just uh, just did measure. Um, uh, Just measure one, lots of vortices. Yes. So some behave this way. Some behaves uh, uh, the one peak near zero, and uh, some does not. So that's. Uh, yeah. so I made the point earlier that the gap map is highly heterogeneous. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah. So the background is changing. I see. Yeah, I will. I will tell you more things, huh? So let me uh, show you the statistics. So yeah, because we, 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 we cannot really define which vortice really has a peak sitting at zero because that's a precise uh, definition. So we, what we have done is that within this window, if we have a peak uh, position within plus minus 0 0.1 mm, we call it is uh, zero mode. Then we have this kind of concentration. So that's about 30, 34 percent. When the field is half Tesla, that when the field increase, that drops down. So that we we measure this one uh, 240 uh, vortices for six Tesla. So that's the the uh, ratio. If I compare to uh, Hanagori's data, tens uh, of measurement was done at a much lower temperature, as I know. Uh, so uh, when the field is one Tesla, he has. Uh, about 80 percent, and then the, when the field increase, uh, all this is uh, all this drop down. That, that's that's consistent. Okay, uh, up to six Tesla, maybe already 10 percent, which is consistent consistent with ours. Uh, uh, Tesla's data uh, looks quite beautiful, and uh, but I see a lot of spots here. So that one uh, I don't know was the reason. I also posed a question to him, and uh, he said it could be impurity state. But, it, but uh, many peaks could be the resolution is high, then so many, uh, so many uh, uh, impurity states have been observed. Uh, and uh, indeed, the, uh, some of the vortices shows uh, peak close to uh, at zero, I must say. This is very close. And then a lot of uh, these kind of things uh, that we don't know, yeah. So we, we see um, uh, in more vortices, this, this kind of zero, uh, zero conductance. We also use a magnet field uh, for one uh, vortice. It shows this kind of peak. Then we increase the magnet field, even split, you can see. At the two Tesla, this one drops down. Uh, you know, if you want to measure one vortex at different field, that's not easy. You cannot define this vortex still that one, you know, <laughs> because, uh, because the vortex will, new vortex will be produced under, under the higher field. So, uh, but for, for this case, we guarantee that it is at the same precision uh, in the field. The, this is the tiny spectrum uh, on the ion, uh, the without field. Uh, then uh, this is in the core, you see there. So the, it, uh, this, this peak split. For a single vortex uh, with Majorana mode, uh, theorists tell, me that, uh, tell us that it will not split. So this splitting could be due to uh, due to uh, the interaction between the vortices uh, with Magellanus or, or some other reason. So that's uh, we, we don't know. And uh, this, this set of data shows another behavior. So this peak is lower down with the magnetic field uh, continuously up to six Tesla, you can still see. So we, we don't have the, uh, uh, how to say, uh, common rule. But the, uh, the, common, uh, the, the understanding from the data is that the magnetic field can easily, can easily suppress the zero conductance peak. Uh, but sometimes even at a six Tesla, we still see uh, vortices. For example, three vortices all show the zero peak. Uh, for, for that, we, we don't know why. Even the field is six Tesla. So, so maybe the environment is also very sensitive. Uh, we also change with temperature. For this zero peak, we change with temperature. When the temperature comes to uh, 2.5 Kelvin already the peak is gone. So, uh, so temperature is very sensitive to the to the zero bus conductance peak. Sorry. Yes. 
Do you understand why the magnetic field suppresses the zero bias key? Does anybody understand? Yes, some series like uh, like uh, uh, Fortune Down and uh, Anna Marie, uh, maybe uh, not yet. Eh? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, because uh, when our paper, the, this paper posted on the web a few days ago, we get uh, several uh, response uh, to remind us that we have considered that uh, how to interpret this uh, field uh, field dependence. So what is the story? The story is that the, the Majorana is very fragile to the interaction okay. of the vortices. So the idea is increase the magnetic field there. Yes. The Vortices are denser, the distance is closer, so they can tunnel. But, uh, but if it's the denser, then our data say that the distance is not the only only factor because uh, uh, our data shows that the six Tesla, uh, six Tesla, even the neighboring three vortices also the zero bias Not not only the distance, mm -hmm. uh, maybe also the order. I mean the local uh, uh, vortex structure mm -hmm. and the local other defect or something. So which is not so clear yet. Okay, so then uh, let me show, uh, we also uh, did the statistics on the uh, so-called uh, uh, ratio of the tellurium and, uh, and the selenium. For, for example, uh, this yellow area shows the tellurium uh, atom. So here you can see that these vortices, uh, all these vortices show the zero byte connectance peak. So for some area you can see a dense tellurium, but somewhere you don't see very dense tellurium. Yeah, here is not very dense. Okay, so, and for some... So, so, so what are these uh, blue-yellow plots? Here? Yeah. What oh, here's uh, the concentration of the tellurium and the selenium on the surface. So, uh, from our data, we can figure out where is the tellurium, where is the selenium. And then we don't see... Uh, let, let, me, let me show uh, the vortices without the uh, zero bias conductance key. So, you can see that here, tellurium also, well, it's a... It's a bit diluted, huh? but here it's also dense, but we, but we don't see the zero bus connected peak. So it seems that the terminal surface, on the terminal surface, the, the, the concentration of tellurium and selenium does not uh, 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 give this uh, strong influence on the, uh, 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 on the emergence of the zero bus uh, conductance peak. Yeah. What's the landscape here on this Landscale? Land scale? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not written down here, so I need to check. I think there's something like 20, nanom uh, 20, uh, 20 nanometer or something like that. 20 nanometer. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you mean, you mean this? Uh, yeah. This is a ju just a, just a map, uh, just to draw the vortex shape here. So you can see, so here the tellurium has a quite high concentration, but without a zero bar connection. So we want to say that the surface concentration of tellurium and selenium does not influence the, uh, the core state. Uh, I mean, the, the zero bar connection is big. So, so it, it is a mass message. So it, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. So it is still not so clear message. But to the field. Temperature. Yeah, this is uh, this is the zero point forty three. Yeah. Yeah. This is the resolution is maybe forty micro electron volt. Forty micro. Forty micro. Four hundred. After four hundred. Four hundred micro. Yeah. How do the current state is are less than one? Oh, that's much larger, I think. If you use a delta, like I say, delta equals let's say two, then the EF, uh, I mean, up to you, how, how to use, I mean, it should, should be much larger than 0 0.04 millimeter. Oh, but the uh, sample is uh, mm homogeneous. -hmm. Yeah, but, uh, but the gap, I mean, the minimum gap in most measurements, in most of the lab, shows something <coughs> like two, two millimeter. Yeah. So if you use a two millimeter as a gap, if you use a EF as a 10 millimeter, or even smaller, then this, uh, this spacing should be much larger. The first level energy should be much larger than, than the resolution. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let me let me quickly. Yeah, I I don't know how much time do I have. I can tell you that you have thirty three seconds and ten minutes. That <laughs> 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 Thirty three seconds. Uh, what can I do? <laughs> okay.
let, let me spare you the second. Let me quickly. Uh, uh, then about so this conclusion is that we see this current uh, the discrete current dishonomatic state uh, could be due to the small uh, Fermi energy compared to the gap, and that would imply the B PCS BEC crossover. <coughs> and then we see in some vortices this so-called zero bus conductance peak that it does not behave as the, as the user currently the much can state. This could be due to the Majorana mode or due to the multi band effect that, that we, we are not uh, we are open yet. So let me uh, very quickly uh, using several minutes to so uh, then we try to measure uh, something, uh, some vortex structure in the topological superconductor. So uh, first we try in this uh, uh, doped uh, superconductor. Then we find that very difficult. Then we come to the deposit uh, using MBE deposit film. Then uh, on the ion based superconductors, then we get uh, about topological uh, because of time limit. I don't have time to go through. I think uh, Yula will give <laughs> give you more. Uh, description uh, for the experimental data. The uh, there is some preliminary for one-dimensional uh, superconductor on the terminal of this uh, uh, Z5 zero bias conductor peak, which could be uh, a Majorana mode. Uh, in uh, 2014, uh, Liang Fu came up with a theory to say that in this Bismuth uh, two selenium three system, if you induce a top, uh, superconductor due to the strong optical coupling. It could be possible to induce an art parity superconducting gap, uh, which is a, a topological superconductor. That's a paper is clearly uh, written the art parity topological superconductor with a pneumatic order. Uh, uh, this is a theoretical uh, expectation for such a structure, what kind of order it would be. And uh, actually, there are three uh, gap. Uh, there are three, there are four X, there are four Y, which is uh, art parity. And these two should have a pneumatic feature. Okay. Uh, actually, now for the theory was uh, inspired by the experiment of, uh, of uh, Guo Qingzhen in the AMR measurement. They found in this sample, they found that the night shift has a, 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 a twofold symmetry uh, feature. So in that case, they proposed this kind of art parity gap with a, a twofold symmetry. Okay, either delta 4x and then delta 4y. Uh, with a gap like that, this is the implant gap. Uh, uh, so one k delta 4x with a node, delta 4y does not come, uh, have the node. So that's the. So uh, my group, we grow the sample uh, uh, of this one, the superconducting. We do the c axis transport measurement. We do see very clear two fold symmetry uh, behavior because that shows something. Indeed, I mean, in the beginning, I don't believe. I mean, where, how, 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 how come a system with a three-fold symmetry and you have a two-fold gap, two-fold symmetry gap? But after measurement, we have to agree that something happening, just like a two-fold. So this is a, uh, we measure C-axis resistivity with a magnetic field rotating within the plane. So in that case, uh, uh, we avoid the Lorentz force direction. Okay, so the Lorentz force is always appropriate. Uh, the perpendicular, the current uh, field. So in that case, we see this kind of two-fold. Uh, we measure total four samples, and uh, uh, all show this kind of behavior. We also use the law to determine the atomic structure, so which fit fit up, fit either delta four x or delta four y, uh, quite close. Uh, okay, so let me come quickly to the. Then we use STM to do the measurement of this sample. We find that it's not it's inhomogeneous. So sometimes you we see this kind of gap. Uh, well, the strontium uh, uh, sits there as a cluster, okay, intercalated. Then we see the superconducting gap. But uh, if the strontium dope to the bismuth side, then we don't see superconducting. And uh, we fit that. Uh, what we find uh, interesting is that if we increase the magnetic field. Uh, uh, for the superconducting gap, uh, then we see that when the superconducting superconductivity is suppressed completely, then uh, we see this kind of strong oscillation of the density state. That one we can't uh, calculate the peaks. We found that it's, uh, it this satisfies the Dirac dispersion. So we think that it is the Dirac electrons on the surface, and so this is the kind of spectrum at 
zero tesla, two tesla. So when the field increase, you can see the gap feature is suppressed gradually. But instead, you can see this kind of a wiggling uh, become stronger and stronger, and uh, we we believe that th this is due to the surface state. That's the surface state behavior. So we propose such a structure, that's such a picture, that the box of conductivity somehow drives these dark electrons into into Cooper pair. And this is the, this uh, this uh, cotton plot. Uh, this plot was made based on, on the data. So this is a strong. Uh, mm, uh, 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 quantum oscillation due to the Dirac electrons. Okay, so then we deposit the ion tellurium thin film on the ion uh, base superconductors uh, to induce uh, topological uh, to induce superconductivity. You can see that this is the tiny spectrum on the substrate ion base superconductor. This is a one quantum layer, two quantum layer, four quantum, three quantum layer thin film of the ion tellurium. So we believe that we have induced the proximity induced the superconductivity here. Then we, uh, you can see this spatial evolution here for for two quantum layer already very uniform. So which it behaves not like in the substrate. Okay. So we believe that the Fermi energy should be should be bigger now. Uh, should be Fermi velocity should be bigger now because it, which is uh, very different for, from this one. And then we use uh, whether we see this twofold gap. We use a quasimatic interference. Technique. This technique, I, I don't have time to say more. Uh, because we, we, we know that if the gap has a minimum on the Fermi surface somewhere, we should have a possibility to see the density state. Uh, the, the Q plot, the density state will show up. Okay? So based on that, we, then we find that quite interesting. So within the supernatural gaps, the gap is 2 mV. You can see that so these two shows up first. Yeah? So it's uh, something like that. And uh, um, this is a negative energy, positive energy. So, yeah. But once the energy goes up to the gap, then the sixth six, uh, side of the uh, topology shows up. So this is uh, the 2.5 mEV. This is more clear than, than this one. Uh, this is 1 mEV. So the one side shows clear. If we map out the, the gap, a structure, then we find that this one just satisfies the so-called delta 4y uh, gap uh, theoretical prediction. Uh, that. And in addition, we do uh, we, we apply magnetic field, then the vortices can be formed. Then this is a vortex structure, it's a strongly elongated vortex. If we measure tunnel spectrum along this direction, then you can see that uh, actually in the center you see a giant peak. And this peak does not split, just stays there, and it becomes weakened, okay, uh, along this direction. However, if you go through this direction, then you can see that in a certain period, this peak does not split. Uh, it, it does not look like the currently the shunt state. Uh, uh, however, if you go further, then this peak, uh, this single peak, split uh, into two. Uh, that's the data. So for this one, uh, we are not so sure that whether it is also Majorana mode has been formed on these vortices. Which surface is shown in the top of her? Uh, here? Yeah. This is uh, the iron tellurium. Uh, 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 no, the, the bismuth uh, 2 tellurium 3 okay. surface. That's the bismuth surface. Oh, yes. No, it's a tellurite yes. surface. Bismuth. Uh, 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 Telluride, telluride surface. Yes, yes, telluride surface. Yeah. Which is which is uh, uh, I mean, no, it's uh, here. That's the telluride surface. Yeah. Uh, which shows already the, this kind of structure. Yeah, this uh, hexagonal structure. This uh, this is a uh, Fourier transform. Obviously, the vortex has a much lower symmetry than the crystal structure. Yes. That's, that's the theory says that it should be a pneumatic superconductivity of that, yeah. Okay, so, uh, so then, uh, one more point before ending my talk is that if we increase the energy, then we just uh, uh, plot the intensity of the vortices, then it seems that uh, one vortice is split into two. So this is uh, when the field is uh, energy is zero, we can see uh, one bar, huh? this is the, each one corresponds to one vortex. 
However, if we increase the energy, you can see split gradually. Mm -hmm. uh, to one millimeter, mm -hmm. then this distance is quite large. So that's that's a very interesting thing. Uh, we don't have a spin polarized uh, SDM yet. So we uh, could be something related to the topology, topological feature or not. So, so yeah, just uh, <laughs> great. <laughs> okay. So uh, actually, here comes some theoretical work by Igor uh, Babiev to say that if we have a strong spin optic coupling for vortices, then the vortices should look different from a conventional vortex because you have the spin and momentum locking effect. Okay, so the spin uh, up, spin down. Now it's a de uh, the de the degeneracy is lifted. So in that case, this part and this part would be different. That could be the reason. So we, we are uh, trying to measure uh, using a uh, spin polarized chip. Uh, so with that, uh, this is the second part of the conclusion. So from the QPI, we see this is two-fold symmetry, and uh, the vortices shows elongated vortices. Along this lens direction, we see this kind of uh, zero bias conductance P. Uh, 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 this work, uh, I sent to my uh, young, uh, hard-working young, uh, Young faculty and a young student. Uh, okay, uh, and also some samples uh, uh, are growing. In the group. Some samples are from Gendagu in Good Heaven. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Questions? There was plenty already, but we keep on going. Yes, Peter. I have one question which is maybe more for the theorist. So. so you distinguish between Majorana, Majorana states and CDGM states. Yes. I, I thought that the Majorana state is nothing else than the CDGM state of not parity superconductivity. Well, um, according to my understanding, I, I first asked the uh, answer yeah, yeah, yeah. to Siri. <laughs> no, 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 no. So uh, Majorana mode, uh, due to the due to the parity, uh, so should be sitting at zero. Uh, energy and uh, the, for the parity the chance much can stay according to the uh, first theory and uh, later you can see that it should not uh, sit at zero. Uh, for even parity. For even parity. Yeah. For other parity, I'm not sure. No, no. In this case, uh, this is a time reversal symmetric superconductor, so there should be two, if you wish, so counter propagating um, uh, so, uh, Majorana modes in that vortex core. <coughs> One, but two. Um, and they should both be sitting at zero and not talk to each other if the world was perfectly isolated and there would be no time reversal symmetry source in the anywhere. But, but isn't the Marana mode just one of the, also a series of discrete states? I, the key thing is it has to be at zero. Yeah, it's at zero, yeah. sure. And yeah. absolutely zero. That's the only way it gets the Marana property. When it's a solution of the same equations, yeah. Yeah, exactly. uh, yeah. uh, in that sense, there's a clear resemblance, but it has something unique because of its uh, of, it, of its zeroness. I, was, I think there was a month. Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, many vortices are going to be thin, right? And the places where vortices are thin are usually places also where you have some different density of states. That's, that's a good point. Yes, we, we, we have checked that. We have checked, actually today I don't have time. Actually we have checked the vortices. Uh, when the field is zero, we measure the scanning uh, on the space. Indeed, it seems that uh, for the vortices showing the zero bias conductance peak, uh, the, the, I mean, should be more uniform. Yeah, well, once you have uh, some kind of a, uh, uh, gap shrinking. Uh, we we think that there is a, uh, uh, some kind uh, some kind of impurity. Then the vortex could be pinned there, and for such a vortex, then the then it's uh, it's uh, more difficult to see the zero bias connection. Uh, from the vortex configuration, you can see which ones are pinned because it's not there. You mean the shape, huh? Yeah. yeah. And from the lattice itself, you may triangulate and see which ones are. That's true. That's true. That's true. Seems that. <laughs> Uh, seems that oh, this yeah, is not the this is not the zero bias. Well, yeah, it's well. I don't know how to say. Uh, this is a very small, uh, small. Mm. So there's no relation between your statistics and the and the vortex positions. 
We, we, do, we do have some statics, but not so much. So we, uh, for some vortices, show the zero by connectors peak, then we lower down the field to zero, then we measure the scanning again, we find that that's more uniform. So at least the two or three vortices, we have compared that. So for some vortices, we, we, uh, without the zero by conductance peak, then we measure, then the gap somehow is uh, shrink uh, somewhere. Yeah. So you showed very beautifully how to detect the topological surface state by using the Landau levels uh, yeah. for bismuth tritelluride. Yes. So if you do the same experiment for iron selenide telluride, do you detect the surface state? We don't. We we have not. So that I told the Hong Ding. Uh, the Hong uh, Hong told me that the, uh, how how can you use. Uh, 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 quantum oscillation to detect the surface state. So, uh, but that's a standard technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. Uh, you, yeah, uh, uh, very good question. Actually, uh, for 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 this system, I mean, we believe it it is really the surface when it comes to the. So, the question is that uh, if we have a surface topological surface state, we should be possible to see this kind of beautiful quantum oscillation of the uh, which is obvious in the. Uh, Dirac dispersion, yeah, linear dispersion, uh, Dirac dispersion. So if there's a surface but, uh, state on our selenide telluride, you should yeah, detect yeah, the Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's a good point. So we should see such things. That is the most strong evidence for the topological surface state. <coughs> Wait. So I, do, I just want to understand better. Yes. What was the difference between the nature communication that you published last year yeah. and the preprint that you have put uh, on the archive last week? Previously, you didn't see yes. any, and now you see some. Uh, as I said, that uh, I mean, as a scientist, uh, what I saw, I can say. Okay, so that's my point. So, uh, so uh, la last year we uh, we measured thirty vortices, and uh, as I said, that maybe forty to fifty percent shows a peak, a giant peak, but not really sitting at zero. Okay. So that's uh, my uh, our claim uh, uh, claim in the paper. Now this year we measure more and more, uh, but still the percentage is it's not so high. Uh, when, when but, if it, but at the same field as your oh same field it's a same field. Let, let's come to the same field. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, the the field is also a factor could be because uh, last year we our field was four tesla, okay. so we did not realize that the lower field we can promote uh, such things. Uh, so let me come to here. Sorry, mm. but the samples are identical. Yeah. So the so the field uh, field is four tesla. So our early measurement was done at the four tesla. Okay. Uh, here shows ten percent, and, and, and even this I cannot say each one locate really at zero. So we use a window, the criterion, the so plus minus uh, zero point one dB. So that's a difference. I think it's consistent. Uh, <coughs> Hong Ding has a more consistent to me because they observe the secondary peaks, which is the Kauri Deshant much more stable. Yeah. You'd have 100% at zero field. Uh, according to this one, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 yeah, according to this curve. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, for high field, quite similar, okay? Let's say uh, beyond three Tesla, similar. Then come to lower field, his concentration is higher. Uh, that could be the resolution. Uh, okay, how do you do that? Yeah, at one Tesla, nearly 80%. Yes, one Tesla, 80%. That's higher, yes. Why is that higher? Uh, I, I, I think, I think uh, actually we, we, we saw this for a long time. <laughs> Uh, one reason could be his uh, temperature is lower, uh, resolution is higher, that could be. Uh, oh, in the resolution is higher, I mean the flow rate is lower. Higher. Okay. Uh, but here, yeah, what resolution the flow rate should be higher? If one single peak is constructed by several, and one of the several sitting at zero, that's a kind of great state. Okay? So if you have a, a, a higher, uh, I mean, if we have a peak, okay, like our, uh, let's say, let, let me pick one peak. If we have a peak like that, uh, not sitting, let, let me come to it. 
come to the to the one early one, huh? Let let come to here. For example, this this one, I say it does not sit at zero. But if uh, Tezos data has a high, high resolution, could come could have m much more levels here. Maybe one of it is sitting at zero. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. And the second difference between our sample and his sample is that the tolerance of his sample is higher. And uh, uh, mine is uh, 0 0.55, uh, theirs is uh, 0 0.6. So that's the only difference. Others, I think, the same. Yeah. But how does that difference in tolerance concentration translate? Because you already mentioned how much tolerance you have on the surface doesn't seem to matter. Yeah. So maybe that translates the to the gap size? Or, or, or no, the gap size is the same. Uh -huh. All other super negative features look very similar. So uh, we don't know how to, how no, to think only about the theory, that. Only the theory says that more tolerance would drive more, uh, 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 yeah, so uh, the more surface state. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I had a question with the liquid cyanide. It would show the delta f x and delta 4 y ones. Yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Yes. Oh, this was yeah. So, so basically, the statement is you have either the delta four x, which is yes, which is a normal state. Or delta four. Yes. Well, either this and, and three times degenerate, or that one and rotate it in in two different ways, right? Yes. These are the two options. Yes. And the system should either do one or the other, yeah. and then it can spontaneously break the axis along which this is oriented. Yeah. You now there are these penetration depth measurements here by Christine Villa and. Uh, yeah. They see indication for nodal point nodes yeah. of the superconducting state. That would favor the delta for x yeah. state. Yeah. You conclude that it is the other one. Uh, uh, remind us a little bit what the <laughs> argument was. It was a no, for actually, me. <laughs> our transfer data favors two. So this is the delta favors two. Which one? To either delta for x or delta for y. Oh, it favors both. Either. Yeah. Yeah. There are different experiments that favor different, or yeah, that's true. Okay. So I mean, from the tra these are data. Huh? So uh, I mean, I mean, uh, 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 these two I remember could favors delta four x, four x, and this one close more close to delta four y. Because it's ninety degrees of that one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so for the Bob sample, indeed, I mean, uh, we. Uh, uh, we don't know uh, either data for x or data for y. Which one's <laughs> the mm. final state? Yeah. And do you find that it's an, mm, that it would be more consistent with point nodes from other experiments, or with an, with a finite uh, minimum gap? Mm. Yeah, our tunneling spectrum on this surface does not show a uh, nodal gap. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Yeah, so it's a. That's a, that's a that's a very very interesting thing. But uh, uh, you can see the tunneling spectrum <coughs> does not really show the nodal gap. It doesn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was I think one more question. Yeah. Yeah. You you rightly mentioned the chroma page uh, shrinking of the body score size when you increase temperature. Yes. You should see that particularly well when you see one state. But uh, did you did you see that? You mean the gap size, uh, the the gap uh, the, the, the decay in the beginning of the, huh? of, this, of the of the one of vortex core stage when you increase the temperature, uh, when you uh, how was that? We have not measured that. Okay. Yeah. So that could be interesting. You mean this this yeah. this slope? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we we did not measure that. Do you think that would, that would call for a heritage in particular states or for, for Mayoranas or? Uh, this one, this one should be measured, should be measured within the vortex, uh, within the vortex, and the, with different temperature with the gap. So the gap should be now because we have the bound state uh, within the gap. So we should see the uh, gap age. Huh? So that determine how large the gap is uh, changed with the distance. We did not measure that in the detail. Okay. Are there any further questions? That means we reconvene here 10 minutes to 6. Yeah. And we're pretty much on time.